Welcome to episode 50 of the Self Care 101 podcast, helping you to crush overwhelm, stay focused, and live better with your host, Pooja K. McClymont. Thank you so much for listening today. In this episode, I'm interviewing my very first celebrity. Now, exciting as that sounds, I didn't know he was a celebrity when I met him. We just clicked in our thinking about well being and we exchanged numbers. Elijah Rowan is an actor. You might know him from the popular Amazon Prime show Vikings, or more recently as Zane in Curfew. Elijah greatly believes that one should plan for what is difficult while it is easy and to do what is great while it is small. I love that. Elijah never knew what he wanted to do with his life until he had finished school and seemingly ran out of options. It was then he decided to study acting. After graduating Irish Theatre School, he decided to give his all to acting and after great struggle and highly unconventional methods, an agentless Elijah found himself on the set of History's Vikings. Shortly after, he landed himself leading roles in other large-scale productions. Rowan is determined to use his trajectory to immerse himself to the fullest, not only in front of the camera, but in the writing, producing, directing, and every other element of this many layered industry. As well as being a great young actor, Elijah is definitely an old soul. He has such an open and grounded outlook on life and being well that I am inspired by him and the future that he will affect for generations to come. In this show, we talk about self-love and how it applies to men. We discuss what Elijah does in his own life to keep himself well, especially in his often volatile and stressful industry. I hope you enjoy this show as much as we did making it. So let's get to it. Hi, Elijah. How are you doing, Pooja? Good to see you. I'm good. Thank you. Oh, so good to see you. I mean, when was the last time we saw each other? Uh, It was at a party, wasn't it, at the ice bar? It was at a party in the ice bar. There was wine and uh, all sorts of wonderful things being had. Yes, lots of cocktailing. More for me, because I believe you weren't drinking that evening. I'm drinking that evening. No, no. I was detoxing. (laughs) You were detoxing. Good man. But interestingly, that evening, I sort of, I fell for you that evening in terms of your personality and your calm. Like, we were, we were in a frenzy. We were in a party, you know, like, it was a high vibe party. And you were just so chill and so grounded. And obviously, we were yapping all, like, for ages, weren't we? We were, we were indeed. And you sort of, obviously, you stayed with me in terms of my heart, my energy and things like that. And it was, it was amazing. I mean, we talked about going, coming on one of my retreats, my retreat that I was going to be hosting in India, actually, next month. And I was just very much inspired by you. And I, I wanted to see a way of us working together. If there was ever something that we could do together, obviously, I'd love you on one of my retreats. But I was really grateful that you agreed to do the podcast because... This particular show is something that I know I mentioned it at the top of the um, call with you, but I always actually wanted to work within the sort of high profile person celebrity space. And it was inspired by um, Amy Winehouse, actually, because I found her passing, the circumstances of her passing, really devastating on life. And it was like they're doing such wonderful things, like she was bringing such beauty to the world. And yet she couldn't cope with it for, mm. you know, various reasons. And that's this based on so many things, obviously, the people around you and how you grow up and how you stay grounded. And something that I felt really inspired by with you was how grounded you were, how chill you were. And, you know, I was a little bit, you know, in the sort of fan zone because you've been in Vikings, which is an incredible show, right? That's right. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think what we'll do is, why don't you introduce yourself, because I'm yapping too much now, because I'm overexcited, and <laughs> you introduce yourself, and then we'll take it from there. And uh, yeah, today we're going to talk about self-love, so I'm looking forward to this. Lovely, so am I. Well, look, you've already bigged me up a lot there. I don't really need to big myself up anymore. Um, I, I do a bit of acting um, and other things in the film industry. Uh, I've done a couple of shows already, Vikings, Curfew, um, a couple of sort of indie films. What's more interesting is the things that are to come. But um, 
yeah, I'm, I'm on a journey and, yeah. uh, and uh, yeah, we're going to find out a, a, hopefully some interesting stuff today about this topic you're referring to. And hopefully I can shed some light on it and uh, inspire somebody. Yeah, no, absolutely. So something that I wanted to talk about was basically that I've been, you, I've been uh, talking about self-love all of this month. And I've been getting a lot of attention from women about it, which is sort of the natural way it goes. A lot of women are, you know, tend to not put themselves first and then they'll have kids and they don't do it again. But it is something that affects men as well. And I was really interested in your opinion on how a man, because the, even the words self-love, I don't like to use them because I feel that they're a bit too fluffy and not quite what the sentiment means. Essentially, self-love is your self-esteem, your regard for yourself and who you are. But with, with self-love, it does fall into that space of having regard for your happiness and well-being. Mm. And, you know, from society years ago, our parents, you know, men have sort of grown up to obviously man up and don't cry and things like that and they've just got to go and provide and they've got to have these high profile careers and yep. their way and and stuff but obviously within that comes stress and comes imposter syndrome and insecurities mm -hmm. and we know that <clears throat> i feel like right now in the world that we're in men are potentially more insecure than women are yep. and yep. right so um well, yeah just yeah, share your thoughts but my thoughts on that are, it's, 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 look, you've got it bang on. I mean, it's this whole, uh, the, the men and women are, are taught to, to be a certain way, I think, from a young upbringing. It may, and one thing with regards to how men are taught to be is there's this sort of macho thing in, uh, in I was going to say modern culture, but since I think probably the beginning of time, that men must be a certain way. Mm -hmm. And here's, a, and I'll go straight and I'll get heavy for a minute, but uh, more men commit suicide than women. Mm -hmm. Now, I've, I had a little theory into that, um, that when you cry, right, because I, I know, you know, many friends who are men and women, the men cry very little, the women cry a lot. Now, when you cry, for instance, when the going gets tough and you break it down, there's a reason why your body wants to break down. And it's because it's releasing these chemicals in your brain, releasing this tension, blah, blah, blah. But men are taught, actually, that crying is not okay. Mm. That, that's embarrassing which is crazy, by the way, because it's natural. And, uh, and, you know, there's a reason your body wants to do it. But men seem to want to hold this back and women seem to be more okay to do it. And the women are right. If you want to cry, you should cry. And I think that maybe even that suicide statistic might have something to do with simply uh, this macho thing of, I'm not supposed to cry. Mm, no, if you don't release this stuff. And, and not only crying, if you don't talk about this stuff, mm. which men are very scared to do, you know, I'm actually feeling terrible, man. I'm feeling really insecure. I'm feeling anxious. I've got a lot. Of, there's this lad culture, you know, yeah. let's go for a few pints and we're all tough. And, 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 and you know, there's almost belittle women sometimes and this stuff and because that's cool and it's macho. And this is very, very dangerous mentality. And this is happening around you because you're a young guy. You're younger than me, right? You're in your 30s? Yeah, I'm 25. <laughs> in my 30s. <laughs> Oh, gosh. oh my gosh you're 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 25 wow okay so i see now i thought you were in your 30s because obviously the way we've conversed well, sorry. Take it as a compliment. it's, it's totally it's always, yeah, no no, no. <laughs> it's, it's that whole you're wise beyond your years kind of person but yeah, okay yeah, so, so you're 25 <laughs> well then this is even more interesting so do you still feel as a 25 year old within your peers that that macho culture and that's being scared to cry still exists it completely does. It, it does with people who are outside of my close circle. You know, I've got a, wow. a close circle of people I really trust. And, and we, like, it is so important to us that we always, that, you know, it's something that saved me, that keeps me grounded, that keeps me happy, that keeps me, is my close little circle of people I trust. Because I will talk to, to them about anything. Mm -hmm. I'll talk, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and sometimes a therapist is, is necessary. But for me, I don't think it ever would be because I've got five, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's a very, very healthy thing. And there's never any judgment. You know, if one of us were to break down into tears, two men, or three men in a room, and you know, we're not wimps, but if we were to break down into tears, there'd be no, sh there, would, there would be, oh man, you know, I understand, it. you know, fair play to you, you know, you should be crying and all this stuff. Um, so for, for my little circle, 
we, we've eliminated that because we, we've got an understanding maybe of mm. it. But then I've got, you know, I know many, many, many other men and I have friends that are not as close and they would never dare speak about some of these things. Oh, I'm feeling anxious yeah. or oh, I'm feeling uh, whatever it be. I'm insecure. I'm nervous. I'm, no, they're, they're, too, they're too tough for that. You know? See, it's interesting because you said... Um... When you were talking about it just now, you said that men are scared to cry. What is it that they're scared of? Is it, I mean, it, it may well be that whole macho, that bravado of I'm, I'm too man, I can't cry. Mm. But as, as a man yourself, and obviously you're, in a, you're very lucky to be in this special circle, this, you know, you've got these really meaningful connections. And I agree with you, when you have those kinds of close people with the, without the judgment people you can trust to say mm. anything to to be however you want to be with the need for the therapist doesn't necessarily need to be there because you're always speaking out right essentially mm. exactly. and not harboring exactly. it exactly. yeah so and then not, and not then if it gets up emotions exactly that's, and then that's, if that's it does get too much they'll tell you, I think you need to go and see counselling because they care and they know that, oh, hold on, this is, this is getting too deep now and it's something that's out of our control. So you're very, very lucky with that. But what is it that makes men scared to cry? I, I guess it's fear of judgment. It's fear of being judged by other men and maybe in their heads, even women. Oh, the women will find me less attractive. Now, I do believe that that's a completely irrational fear. Mm -hmm. I believe actually... If someone, for instance, were to break down and cry in front of people they didn't know that well, and they were to just hand up and say, "Well, sorry, man, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm really upset and I'm crying and I'm sure," I don't think anyone would actually say, "Oh, what a loser." I think they, even if they've never seen it or they're not used to it, I think even the the, the most laddish lads would say, "Okay, I respect that guy. He's so honest. Mm. You respect honesty, a, you know, a tremendous amount, but people are afraid to be honest. I don't think they realise how much it's actually respected, you know." Mm. Everybody has to put on this front because they don't realise if they were actually honest and they were actually themselves, there'd be a, a tremendous amount more respect from everyone. Mm, I agree with you there. But then how do you know who you are? If you're struggling with stuff you know, like this, if you can't express your emotions, how can you know when you are really being you? Because there's obviously some deeper level stuff there. And usually those... those uh, those guys, we're going to be talking about guys particularly here today, those guys who do feel uncomfortable to share their emotions or to be open and honest, be their authentic selves, etc., is usually because it's come from something within their childhood space that has said, mm -hmm. this is the way you're supposed to be, be that society, media, you know, parents, etc., or teachers, whatever. There's something there, and it's hard to undo that if you if you if you completely become attached to it because you get this opportunity, sort of you know, after puberty, going into those teens and adulthood, where you've got two roads to take. The one is the one conditioned by your childhood, or mm. one is to explore mm. who you are and become who you are. And I would say the majority go with what they've inherited and it makes it harder. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. And uh, and look, that's the journey of life really ultimately is figuring out who you, who you are. Yeah. You know, and, and if we could if we were all you know, I, I'd like to think I'm relatively uh, what they call I think mindful. But if I always knew one hundred percent what I was feeling and I like I could control my body and my emotion like, oh I know exactly I'm feeling this way for exactly this reason. <laughs> I'd be a superhuman. <laughs> I can't do that. But, uh, but I think it, the journey of life is to, 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 to keep getting closer to that point. But look, you're right. I think 99, I think it's that high, like I think 99% of people don't really have a clue they are, don't really have a clue what they're feeling. Mm. Uh, they're just covering it all up. They're masking it all up. And they're trying to be who society uh, would have them be. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. So how did you and your friends... I guess, build that trust and that openness, that safe space, because that's also a bit of a holy grail, I think, within friendships. I was lucky mm. to have that because a lot of my friends came from my late teens, sort of 18, 19, 20, like the core of my friendships. And these are really old, like 20 odd year old relationships now. And I still have quite a lot of them today. But 
with yourself now you're 25 and you've managed to create this amazing group of people where there's no judgment and you're in a time where technology and i know we're going to talk about social media shortly but social media is in play how do you get to be authentic now in in this life yeah you know, that, that's that's a good question i I, th- i think the key to authenticity i guess the first key the first step to it is probably honesty and that's once again that's easier mm-hmm. said than done but i think it's just the, the tremendous honesty probably that me and my friends have with one another because you'll see people and maybe this is more a, gir- a female thing um you will see friend groups and i've seen it i've i've met i've met men who do it too but you know i've met women who uh i, I i've shot i've met them twice and then they're i've i've bumped into their best mate and their best mate is and i've met their best mate twice and their best mate is having a go about, you know having a bitch i think is what they call it and it's like and i sort of i think you know why are you guys not just more honest with each other if you've got if you if you're trusting me to to slate your mate your best mate this much you know that doesn't seem right why don't you just be honest with her and tell her that you think she's x y and z so i guess honesty maybe is the first key to to authenticity and figuring mm. out who you are um and you know i do believe this this comes up to trying to be somebody else is uh it's very silly because the, the world uh if you're trying to aspire to be like you know x the world already has x the only thing the world doesn't have the only thing it can offer the world that it doesn't have is you that's so i think that's a key you know Yeah, that's that's really beautiful and agree that is absolutely it it because Oscar Wilde said um there's a beautiful quote by Oscar Wilde that a lot of people you know And that may be where it's quite That's from. probably <laughs> where it is. It's about, you know, it's it's basically about um stop comparing yourself to others because um the world needs you or you you know you are beautiful as yourself and mm-hmm. oh, I can't remember it now and that's going to annoy me but it's something like that and it, it's exactly that and I know that it resonates with so many people like the world needs you to be you and mm-hmm. it is so hard to do that I know that like you know with the work that I do the work that you do it's it's you've got to carve this niche about yourself you know I'm mm-hmm. sure it's very competitive in your in your world with the work that you do and it is hard to define okay who am i am i okay with that and then how do i bring that to the world and how do i meet people who are meet who are sort of at the same not level in terms of hierarchy but you know in the same space as me who are going to be authentic because it is it's important to have those kind of relationships and did you and your friends just sort of i mean how did you become friends did you grow up is it through work So you know when I say me and my friends I guess I I also I'm quite close to our members of my family so you know friends and family but and how did we meet different different uh, I went to acting school I met a couple of my closest friends there and you know I I guess we we've, we've learned from each other a tremendous amount probably from being honest with each other I mm-hmm. guess that's probably where it started sometimes brutally honest sometimes it might revolve in um, <laughs> some some funky <laughs> confrontations but then you know it's real right yeah because the friends that you've never had to go out and we've you know I've I <laughs> we've had some mad altercations I won't get into mm-hmm. this but the friends that you never had an altercation with and it's rare but the friends that you've never had an altercation with there must be that's weird why would you never have an altercation with somebody are you are you high, pulling something back are you covering something up or are you not being honest mm-hmm. because there must be disagreements and then eventually you'll probably find an agreement that's not like you must disagree yeah. is a comfortable conclusion but um But yeah, so I guess we found each other through, through different little walks of life. But there is a thing I think with with acting in particular, and this is probably what what attracts me to acting, uh, is that it's, it's psychological. You know, I love uh, music and I love painting, I love architecture and this stuff. But why probably I saw it being an actor was because the more you know about yourself, the better actor you will be. And if you don't know yourself, you're not a good actor. There's no way. So for me I found it interesting that this was the craft that you could be an unbelievable painter and you could commit suicide Vincent and Van Gogh right mm-hmm. I'm sure you could be an unbelievable actor too of course there's many actors that have been severely depressed in this stuff probably later on but there was probably a point where they were really happy and they really figured out who they were and that 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 helps with the craft and so it's to be able to improve yourself and your craft uh, simultaneously is very um 
it's it's rewarding you know it's a nice feeling and we've all been a lot of my friends are actors so i guess we're on this journey of self-improvement self-love as you said yeah. and uh and and improvement of the craft and they all marry together yeah yeah i think that's amazing it really is amazing and i, I don't mean to sound condescending but for the the ripe young age that you are to be able to have these sorts of relationships a lot of us in our 40s 50s 60s don't have that deep connection with our friends where like you say on you know we're too scared to have an argument and then when you think about like love relationships romantic relationships if people don't argue you're like what's wrong with you like you, yeah. you should be arguing in a relationship and uh, there's theories within sort of in psychology about when you argue in a relationship and people talk about what well, uh, theorists have talked about if you're arguing it's because you care when you don't care is when you don't argue now yep. that rings true for me personally yep. if I really don't care about something I just don't bother I just I'm quite cutthroat I'm very all or nothing and I'll just cut it off this doesn't serve me that's it and even with my husband when we got to we had a rough patch a couple of years ago and I just couldn't argue with him I just didn't I was I couldn't be bothered with it anymore I was like I can't have the same argument with you have the same discussions so I'm gonna stay here and be miserable and you're gonna stay there and be miserable and at some point we're going to communicate better together luckily we have a strong relationship so we know that we can almost push ourselves in that way. But I couldn't argue anymore, I was done. Like, it was, yeah. it was just too much. And I would agree with you. I mean, I've, I've, it's, it's difficult in relationships, friendships, to have that argument, that honesty, you know, because you don't want the risk of losing them. They're not committed to you like a partner yeah. is. They're not committed to you like family are. It's, it's like, the friendship is so precious, you don't want to rock the boat because making mm. new friends can be so hard, right? Yeah, yeah, and I, yeah. And I also think that with what you were saying about women, we tend to be, as women, very judgmental of us, mm. of each other. Now, of course, we can talk about the media, we can talk about the beauty industry, fashion, etc., which influences that. You know, we should all, I mean, I would love to look like J-Lo, but that sort of portrayal of the ultimate woman is... It's quite a lot, you know, and you're always sort of, you're chasing this unfulfilling prophecy, basically, with regards to being somebody else, essentially, like a J-Lo, a, a Madonna at the time, or whatever. And then it's full of comparison, life is full of comparison, oh, that person's got a boyfriend, oh, that person's got this job, and this person looks like this now, and, and then we just find ourselves as women in this space of judgment and it's too hard to be honest because we're trying to be so many other versions of ourselves it gets really tough i think men have it not easier but you guys you know like when you're talking about when you brawl with your guys you'll have it out but you move on quicker yeah oh certainly look a hundred percent you know i think maybe men are yeah i don't want to say less sensitive in that way but but um but there is an element of, of, of that, you know, a guy can actually punch another guy in the face and they can actually somehow be fine a few hours later. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think as well when we talk, when I talk about, when we talk about like arguing, that, that sometimes it's important. I think the term argue is negative. So I don't want to say that arguing is, is, is essential or anything. I think stating your points, your, your conflicting points mm. without arguing maybe is essential. And I think, and that's when this term mindfulness that gets thrown around a lot. These are, these are silly terminologies, but, but people seem to understand what they mean, so I'll, I'll use them. Um, this term mindfulness, uh, for instance, if, if I get into an argument, I think I must be mindful to say, well, okay, I actually got very angry there. And because I got angry, my, uh, my view was skewed. I, I said things I didn't mean. I maybe used a, a tonality that I wouldn't do if I were myself, you know, or, or I got sad and so I, I got nasty and whatever it be. But, you know, if you can have that mindfulness, then, then, then you should be able to avoid uh, negative conflict or mm -hmm. negative debate, you know. Yeah, I think I certainly agree with you there. It, it's it's interesting that you said that about the words, you know, these these are silly words and we talked about it at the top of the call because I I take issue with labels, for instance. Like every everyone feels the need to define themselves and put themselves in their own little box and I'm an empath, I'm a vegan, I'm yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. 
a yoga, a yogi or a yoga, but whatever these things are. And yes, like you say, about mindfulness and everything else. One, they're all coming from the same place, which is, you know, anyway, lots of Eastern philosophy there. And yes. two, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like that's that's kind of like, it, it's it, meditation was fine as meditation. The of same course. thing that you're getting from mindfulness, babe, is what you get from meditation. But you're making it harder for yourself because you're saying that, oh, I can't meditate, I can't empty my head. Meditation is not about emptying your head. Mm. It's about accepting what's in your head and letting it go or releasing it or accepting that, okay, I've got quite a lot of things to do this week, but it's okay because I've got the time and I will delegate. And, and you can do that within meditation, but no, we've got to call it mindfulness in order for it to be, and then put some science behind it because, yeah. you know, but it was fine for the last 5,000 years. Yeah. <laughs> you see, that's the other thing. It's like what's hip and what people can jump on the bandwagon of and, you know, like this new movement of, you know, and so these terminologies, people get linked to the terminologies because they're so hip and they're so mm. current. They get linked to them without even having any understanding of them. You know, and the then, law of attraction. Yeah. The law of attraction, it gets thrown around by every punter under the sun. You know, he's got know. no understanding of it. No, no, it's, it's true. The, the, the understanding of it is definitely quite skewed. And I think, unfortunately, I think a lot of the law of attraction has been attributed to material gain. So you you may well be manifesting all that material gain that you are manifesting, but then how's your soul, sweetheart? How much are you serving the community around you, the world around you? What is your legacy that you had a big lipstick beauty company? How did you change people's lives by doing that? You know, what's, what is your legacy? Anyway, but that's... That could be a whole yeah. other show. <laughs> yeah. But with that whole labeling thing, I think it's really when you start putting yourselves in this box or you try to put yourself in a box, you're just adding more layers of trouble to something quite essentially simple. In essence, you know, let's use terminology from psychology, self-esteem, self-confidence, self-worth, self-respect, self Self-love, I'm not so keen on, but it is, it's very much about building yourself up and knowing who you are, like you say, about being authentic, being you. I think it's incredible as actors, young actors at that, that you guys are able to be authentic because I can, I can appreciate in your craft, it must be quite confusing because you have to epitomize a role. I mean, obviously not like a Viking because that's quite specific. So you could probably separate personalities there. But yes, when we look at some of the, you know, the, when we look at actors, those that convince us of who they are, and then if you walk down the street and you saw them, you would be like, oh, that horrible man. But he was just acting, right? I, I think what you're saying is absolutely spot on because they know themselves. They're able to mm. be all these different um, characters that they are in their, in their work. Exactly. So let's, let's shift gear a little bit and talk about how you take care of yourself because... The industry that you're in, I would, I, from where I'm sitting, looks quite volatile, quite competitive, quite, quite um, intimidating, I think, and potentially overwhelming, especially if you're new coming in and you've got your sights set on somewhere you want to go. How do you take care of yourself in the industry? Because obviously you've got plans, right? And where you want to go as an actor or anywhere else in your creative world. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's, okay, so I guess... Uh, one thing when we talk about taking care of yourself um, that I think is important for the mind and the body, it's something that uh, I think is some often referred to as mindful eating. And what I mean by mm -hmm. that is, because uh, I hate this term diet, right? Because it sounds like it's a temporary thing or a negative thing or something like that. Yeah. But, um, and I look, I will have many pints if it suits me. And I, I'm a bit of a cake addict. I love sweets and sugar and all this stuff. I'm obsessed with it. But, um, but I'm always completely aware with what I'm putting into my body, you know, completely aware. I know that this is a cake. I know it's got uh, sweeteners and all the rest, blah, blah, blah. And, and, that, and then I say, okay, well, now I know I've got to uh, eat a little bit healthier because I just say, you know, th this was unhealthy or so on. A lot of people will literally just wake up and they won't really think about what they, they don't even know what's in, uh, you know, that it, they don't even know the makeup of, of, of white bread or any of this stuff. 
So I think actually just having an understanding of diet is, is an important thing and taking care of yourself. And then when you talk about this industry and, you know, how volatile it is, how competitive it certainly is. And I think that the mentality you have to adapt there is, uh, is one of, of, of not caring about the odds. I, I remember I heard a poem once, which... Um, sorry, am I still there? Yes. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, I heard a poem once uh about uh was, i can't remember how it went but the general message was basically that you've won a race among millions before you were even born biologically you know as in <laughs> sperm yeah it's like so if you, so that was before you were even bur- born yeah you won a race over millions yeah so now you're actually born and you actually have a mind and you have control over your body why on earth are you intimidated to win another race over millions when you did it before you even had a mind. So that, that's something that I think about, like, don't care about the odds, man. It's all, it's, it's in, actually in your hands this time. Because before you were born, it wasn't in your hands. Now it's actually in your hands. Mm. So I, I do believe anybody can, can, can do anything that they want to do. And I don't, I, I believe in talent, talents, but I don't really believe in this concept of like putting talent on a pedestal. And I don't like when people refer to, to people as talented just because they're successful. Mm-hmm. Because I think talent is a small, small, small part of it. There's lots of talented people in the world. There's lots of people that can sing and they don't miss a note, uh, for instance. But, and they've never even practiced. They've never trained. They're never, but, but they're unbelievable. Mm-hmm. But actually, they never get anywhere. And then you've got, you know, some of the biggest artists on the planet. And they had great struggle in even, even, even pitching. The, the, you know, it took them years to even pitch. Mm-hmm. But they went and got it done because they have control over their lives. Yeah. So I think we just got to understand you do actually have control. You have a way in, into any industry if you keep pushing. There, the, you know, the path will open up. You, you, you will kick a door in sooner or later if you have that belief that you can achieve anything, that it is yeah. in your hands. See, this is all the stuff that I love about you. How are you like this? <laughs> <laughs> Were you born like this? Like, I mean... Well, that's that's that I can safely say no. Interestingly, how am I? I don't really know, but but no, I wasn't born like this. I I, I was a very shy uh, kid with with no sort of uh, sense of who he was at all, even up to the age of seventeen. And I, I you know, if I was to look back, it's all a little bit blurry. I, I I've got a great memory of certain things that happened a long time ago, but there's a certain chunk of my life that I don't even overly recall. Um, for some reason, because I was so un, maybe mindful, getting back to this word, so unaware. Mm-hmm. And suddenly, um, awareness just started co- com- coming to me. I don't think I'm, I'm bright, but I think what I do have is an ability to uh, absorb information from uh, anyone and anything. Mm-hmm. And I think once you, once you literally learn from anyone or anything, you just literally you soak it in, you become very aware because um, I was so unusually unaware growing up. I was the weird kid. <laughs> you know? so, uh, so I think maybe that, maybe that helps. Maybe because yeah. I was uh, sat back so much and just observed when I was younger. And, and now I continue to observe and, and also do, maybe. Okay. Yeah, because no, you, you, you're, you're so sure of yourself. And, and sorry to come back to your age again, but to be, you know, of this age in the world of, the the media that we live in today and social media obviously to have so much grounding to have so much um not even level-headedness awareness like you're talking like you're saying you know to have so much awareness about self is definitely inspiring for me as someone older than you because I've got a child so I worry about what the world is going to look like when he is in his 20s you know he's only four right now but I do I am concerned about what the world will look like and when younger people like yourself somebody else that I'm very inspired by is Stephen Bartlett who is at 27 he was like the youngest entrepreneur in the world he's an English guy and he's recently started doing lots of inspirational um, conversations lot, very much along the lines of what we're talking about and he's young and he i find him inspiring for the same reason that you you inspire me because you're saying that it is possible to stay grounded within this crazy world we're living in 
And it's something to, I think, for older people to look at to sort of say, if these young people are doing it, we've really still got time to be able to do this for ourselves as well and not kind of lose ourselves in the race for life, I guess, in a way. And just because I touched upon social media there for a second, now the celebrity lifestyle and stuff is very much obviously prominent on social and you know we're always seeing celebs living their best life. I know more recently certain celebrities have been opening up a little bit more about their struggles, their mental health issues, things like that. And that's all fine because it helps people feel like okay so the, the person that I've adored, like I adore Mariah Carey and then she said that she's struggled with bipolar and it did come as a surprise to me but it was it doesn't do anything for me in terms of like my judgment towards her. It's just like, okay, cool. It's good that you're being open about it. But where I struggle with celebrities talking about mental health issues is that they don't help their followers. They don't help their fans. They're, it's just very, yes, I've struggled with it. And for, for, for me, because this is where I'm outspoken, I guess, about the whole thing, all you're doing is continuing the chat about the, the chronic mental illness rather than looking at ways to improve it or make it better mm. or seek the right help that you need all you're doing is just making people talk in essence about the negative and the more you whatever you put your attention on you're going to get more of and that's what your mind's going to think and be com conflict um uh, convinced by and then like we talked about labels when people say oh i, str I suffer from depression do you suffer from it or do you struggle with it? Because it, uh, for me, I think there is a line. I only talk mm. about depression because I've had it. And mm. I think I feel that way with others. But do you feel that social media is kind of, this is a leading question. I shouldn't ask a leading question. I feel that social media is influencing people not necessarily in the best way. How have you found how do you because you're going to see social media very differently to the way I do to the way someone who is very much a fan is going to see social media so how do yeah, you yeah. how do you be in that space look I think social media is one like we can't as such I think have a go at social media in of itself it's more what what it's become through through people's actions but I, look it can be very uh, dangerous mm -hmm. because because everybody's got this we talk about putting on a front and social media is literally just the front, mm. you know, of that this person wants to portray. It's got nothing to do with them, really. Um, most most of the time, some people might genuinely have it for a, a bit of amusement, or a lot of the bigger people, uh, bigger 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 uh, profiles, like with millions of followers, they, that's it's just a business tool for them. Yeah. They, they're just putting out exactly what they want to put out, yeah. you know. But but people still don't understand. They actually somehow they think. Oh, so and so is you know the happiest person on the planet, and they're loving life, and they're, they 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 they're showing you exactly what they want to show you, and even your friend or the girl you fancy or who you're putting on a pedestal, they're also showing you if they're you know most likely exactly what they want you to see. Mm. So, and it's it's this it's just, the people just don't seem to understand this. This it's it's literally a. This is a little, this is who I want to be. That's what the social media is. This is who I want to be. It's not who I am. And that's, that's the, but people, even though they're doing it themselves, mm. they still are putting people on pedestals who are so happy. The, the, a couple thing, for instance, the couple thing on social media is crazy. Tell you me know, about that. What does that mean? Tell me. <laughs> as in, you see people like, and, and smart people say to me, oh, have you seen how happy so-and-so are together? And I say, oh, no, they just broke up. What? But they, but they, they said they were in love on social media thirty times last week. <laughs> you know, no, they just broke up. That that was bollocks. They wanted you to see that. Oh. So, you know, it's like, and I know it's even often a thing of one person saying to another, "You must post a picture of me uh, today, and you, and you must say you love me on social media to scare this other, you know, bloke or girl off." So it's like. It's just, it's a silly, silly game. It's a silly game and it's a business tool. Mm, mm, that's yeah. what it is. It's a silly game and a business tool. Yeah, yeah I thought that. I, th I think that's quite concise, <laughs> but very <laughs> much so. <laughs> so has it, has it ever affected you negatively, the social media space? You know, probably, 
You know, no, maybe ne yeah. nearly once or twice. You know, when I was younger, maybe a girl I fancy or something is like, oh, you know, oh, she's happier than me or she's living a more fun life than me. I better post a selfie of a few cocktails, you know. Um, but then that, that was a brief stint. I, then I think I realised quite quick that this is a bit of a, a silly, uh, it's, 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 quite, it's quite a shallow thing. It's quite easy to yeah. see through. No, I can't, um, yeah. <laughs> I can well, see well, that. Well, it's, it's a great business to a man. Of, mm. There's money to be made off it. You know, oh, 100%. Sure. Yeah, no, 100%. Like, I, I agree with you. From that, from the business side, and obviously those sort of really high-level celebrities who are like the Beyonce's of, of the world and the j -Lo, it's a business tool. They know what they're doing. They... To be fair, they have teams doing it. You're not talking to Beyonce or J Lo when you when you're messaging. You're talking to a social media team, and those that are savvy do know that. But I, I do worry for those who really have no idea and think that they are talking to and they are engaging with the actual celebrity. I mean, who's got that mm. kind of time? Like I struggle with my engagement, and it's very low my engagement mm. on social media because I don't want to be there so much. I know I need to be. <clears throat> For my business but it's mm. it takes too much out of my day and it's very easy to fall down the rabbit hole of liking and and commenting and then dming and doing a video and making sure i've got a story definitely 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 it's and look I, I think if people took a step back and just saw it for what it was i really think there'd be no we could all have a laugh with us and we could yes. all see some cool pictures and yeah it's fine but it's just it's people's reactions that doesn't probably are it can cause some you know heavy mental issues probably yeah oh 100 percent definitely so with your with your i think more so the the self-love the way you take care of yourself I, I think it's fair to say that you're quite naturally aware something's happened in your life and you've been you've opened up more to the world i loved that you talked about mindful eating it's something i talk about on my retreat actually i teach people to mindfully eat and the word diet has die in it so i think that's already yeah, something that's true. <laughs> i think that's quite telling in itself and i 100 percent agree with you there but coming back to men for a minute what would you say to men with regards to when they see the word self-love? Like I'm doing these new classes and I would love more men to come to them. I do work with a lot of men in my, in my coaching practice, but I would love more men to come. So what would you, as a guy, somebody who does take care of himself, prioritizes his needs and still lives a pretty good life? You, can you say that you're happy? Are you somebody who can say is happy? Yeah. I, I hope I'm happy now and I hope to be even happier in the future, but you certainly yeah. Excellent. So how can men access this side of themselves? How can they take care of themselves in a way where they prioritize themselves? What does that look like? Maybe a term that, that might resonate with men more uh, for some reason, because it sounds more macho, maybe self-respect. Um, self-respect. You know, I think maybe that, that's, that, that would, I think no man would like to say, uh, you know, would, oh, I've got no self-respect. No man would, yeah. would say that. Yeah. Um. So maybe, maybe that that's because the ter terminology in general, you know, as you know, is obviously so powerful, yeah. and like changing one word can change your perspective. Um. Yeah, there is, you know, I guess self-love. It's like it's like mindfulness. It's like law of attraction. It's, it's got a certain thing, a stigma maybe attached to it, doesn't mm. it? That uh, it can discourage uh, people. Yeah, no, definitely. And do you do you take part in meditation? Is that something that is in your life, or what kind of holistic things do you do? Um, I do, yeah, I do lots of stuff like that. Yeah, this is this is exactly. I, mean, I guess this is self 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 self, self care. Maybe that's mm -hmm. another uh, term. Um, I do. Uh, I meditate when when I feel I need it. I don't. I think some be, you know everybody's body is completely different, and some people and I know people that, that need it every day uh, or, or twice a day, uh, and some people don't. And I, I don't need it overly, um, but I do it. I certainly do it. I take part in it uh, whenever I feel I need to, uh, and I do ice showers a lot. You know, uh, oh, yeah. a freezing shower, lots of benefits to that. Mm. Um, I'll do a lot. Of, I'll do a breathing breathing exercises quite a bit that will help me clear my head. But you know. There's so many things you can do, and it doesn't cost a cent. Mm -hmm. That that's uh, that are just so positive for your body, for that self care, self love mm -hmm. um, thing that we're talking about. And and I think people should really give them all a go, because uh, 
not even that the same ones, not everyone needs the same thing, you know, everybody's mm-hmm. even the, the chemical makeup and their brain and body is different. Not everyone needs the same thing, but there's, there is things you can do for free out there that will change and benefit your life uh, in a tr- tremendous way. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that I just advise, yeah, I, I just advise everybody to look into, I, I'll throw, drop a few things, meditation, a few different kinds of it, ice showers, uh, this guy called Wim Hof that does these breathing exercises, yeah. they're great, give them a go. Some people, some people, uh, this is not something I do, but they talk about um, uh, like a, a list of, of, of uh, things that they're uh, grateful for. Yeah. Um, there's lots and lots of angles. Um, yeah things that really will just change your way of thinking if you change your way of thinking you then even the, the chemical makeup in your body changes and your life begins to change i think yeah you know? yeah 100 that's that, that's something that um my clients see in the coaching so when when i'm doing coaching work with them because it's not just a case of it's a it's a talking exercise yes we do the talking but a lot of it comes down to okay what do you do to take care of yourself i always start there yeah. like yes we'll work on you getting your promotion or whatever it is you want but let's first start with how you take care of yourself because if you're not taking care of yourself that's why you're not getting the promotion because something else needs to be done first before you can apply yourself or give yourself to that promotion and you know i have to i always say to clients i'm like i need you to trust in the process i promise you it works it's i know you want to get this promotion or you want to you know become a size eight or you want to get the partner but we've got to go within a little bit. And that's always because what I'm doing is let's fill you up first and then we'll work on the external Mm. things that you've come here for, essentially. And even with those who are coming with self-love or, you know, oh, I've been on a self-love journey and things like that. I'm always curious when somebody says I'm on a self-love journey. It's like, well, if you're on it, what's happening in it? Like, why are we here today? What what am I helping you with at this point? And it's often difficult to answer that. It's like, you know, I'm trying this or I've read this book and I'm doing, it's like, okay, well, you've got to keep obviously doing that because learning is, is, is essential for life. But then are you doing too much? Sometimes we can go on the other side and read too much. And then that goes into overthinking, which then, you know, it's a fine line. Then you start judging yourself being more self-critical. It's very, it's a tough one. But I like that you've, you've said exactly what I would say um, is that, the variety out there of things that you can try and then you just got to see what works for you I think is a really important message it makes it so much more accessible for everybody right yeah completely completely and even just to I'll just quickly touch on something that I saw the other day that I thought was very intriguing and I don't even know if well I've heard they do work since there's this homeopathic uh medicine article that i was reading right and it was uh it was natural remedies for not for anxiety but for the 10 different kinds of anxiety and they were explained um in great detail so if you're you've got a fear of x y and z and blah 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 so that just made it all what that said to me not even that these remedies work or that we need to seek them out or that we can't do it with our own mind i think mm. we can but what it said to me was how different everyone's mind is and so you really need to tune into yourself and, and and you know someone like yourself could help someone do that and, and figure out what it is that uh, that they need yes you yes that, that's it i honestly what you've just said is is it it's figuring out what you need everything is very general even mm. when the celebrities talk about mental health issues it's all very general but you yourself you have your unique story your unique experience of life your traumas elijah are going to be different to my traumas yeah. to somebody else's traumas and so you do have to bespoke it almost you have to bespoke your self-love your self-care your mental well-being all of that your holistic therapies everything has to be bespoke to you because you are uniquely different yeah yeah. no matter what right do you get stressed um you know i hate getting stressed (laughs) so i do everything i can not to get stressed. okay great for instance i i don't really show up to anything late because then i know because I don't like being late, you know, because uh-huh. then that stresses me out. So I don't show up to anything late. Um, I don't like, like, too big. I'm not a clean freak, but I don't let my house get messy because I don't like a big clean up. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's little things that stress me out 
So I just don't, I don't let, I don't let myself get stressed. You know, I yeah. could get stressed, but I, I, I nip it in the bud before it happens. Yeah, no, that's good. That's really good. It's very much your, your planning, your forward planning, essentially, because you know mm. that that's going to happen. So you've put into place a solution to that problem. If you don't like being late, don't be late, leave 15 exactly. minutes earlier. I do a setting the clocks thing. I don't like being late, so I- You didn't get that. Could you try again? Siri. <laughs> Siri thought I was talking to him. Um, <laughs> God, <laughs> are you listening? Um, sorry. So yeah, I don't, um, I put some of my clocks forward so that I'm not late intrinsically, but, and everything flows better. So that's my sort of, uh, what's the word? That's like my plan B, but essentially what you're saying, yes, I would prepare to not be late as well. I think preparation is key with those things. That's really good. That's a really good way of managing stress. So what's happening for the rest of the year? What does 2020 look like for Elijah Rowan? The 2020 is, first of all, it would be so easy to slate it and everybody is slating it. But I do think whenever there's dramatic change, even if you look at the stock markets, for instance, mm -hmm. right? If, so, if it's like, oh no, everything's gone to shit. Well, something, there must be opportunity now that, that everything's so, just so, that everything's so different. Yeah. So the fact that it, it's given us a new perspective, you know, surely, surely even spending this time locked down with by yourself or with your partner, with whoever it be, this it, it change that comes uh, growth, there has to, because it's in comfort that, that I think the growth might stop. So first of all, I'll say that that's something that maybe we actually have to have gratitude for, um, is such a dramatic change, such an opportunity to, to, to learn and to grow because it's uncomfortable for almost everyone, I think. Um, but also with that, that means it is a little uncertain as to whether I'm filming, you know, in September or whether it's yeah. pushed back here, whether it's gone completely here. Yeah. So I think there's some big uh, stuff. I think, I think I'm shooting uh, hopefully two films and, and, and a bit of a series before the year's end. Maybe I'll film one of those things. <laughs> yeah. um, maybe none of them. Maybe no, but I think I, I've got a good feeling. I think there's some big stuff that I'm fine with. Okay, good. Exciting. Well, thank you so much for doing the show. I was just looking at the time and I've, I see that we've run over. Because I, I, I adore you. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> We could have easily just been chatting for longer. So I'll end it here and then invite you back and we can do another show about something else. But Elijah, that was really, really insightful. Thank you so much for... Thank you for having me. Much appreciated. Thank you. Having yeah. that question. Thank you for your time. I think you are, yeah, as I said, I think you're incredibly inspiring and keep living this best life of yours. Like the way you're doing it, the way you're aware and you manage stress by not getting stressed. I love that. Yeah, and I love your style too. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Self Care One Hundred and One podcast. If you enjoyed the show, I would love it if you would subscribe, rate, and review so that other people like you can find the show. To find out more about me, you can follow me on the socials at Frankly Coaching, or visit my website, FranklyCoaching.com. Talk to you soon.